Here's the pipeline that I use to read from MySQL and write to Marketo. So I have a database query that reads uh, email addresses and some other data, first name, last name, and so on, from a MySQL database. Now, the first thing to notice here is that I'm using uh, runtime parameters for things like the JDBC connection string. This is really useful. I can define these at the pipeline level, and I'm kind of blurring them out here for obvious reasons. But it lets me uh, define these once up front and then refer to them throughout the configuration. There's a couple of really useful features there. One is that I can easily switch from, uh, say, development to production and just change what something uh, here once, and it takes effect wherever I've referenced it. And the other thing is that when I want to reference one of these, um, I can just start typing the expression here and the um, autocomplete makes it really, really simple for me. Now, I have a SQL query here. Uh, it's pretty complex, but the main things to notice are I'm basically selecting an email, uh, first name, last name, and so on. And I'm selecting from this registration table. And the key thing here is I'm joining with this table uh, telemetry marketo. And uh, it's actually an anti-join. So I only want emails from registration when there is not a corresponding email in telemetry marketo. And we'll see why that's important uh, as we move along the pipeline here. So I have a bunch of records, a bunch of emails from MySQL, and I look them up in Marketo. Now, I go into more detail uh, of this process in the lookup leads in Marketo video, but basically I'm just calling their REST API here with that email address in each record, and I get back uh, these fields for each record. And they use OAuth2, uh, and I do a little bit of error handling here, uh, again, I cover this in the lookup uh, leads video. And then Marketo gives me uh, not provided as a value of some fields if uh, it has no data. So just to make things easy for myself, I'm uh, using Field Mapper here. And for every field, I say, OK, if it starts with lookup response, so I got it back from uh, this API call, then, and it is a string, OK, I don't want to be operating on um, numbers and so on, then, and the value is not provided, then I'm going to set it to null. And this now lets me s do my data hygiene. Because what I want to do is, if that lead is already in Marketo, I want to keep that data. I don't want to overwrite it. So I can use record value or default to say, OK, set first name to either the response from Marketo, if there was one, or the value from the database if there wasn't. And I just repeat this pattern through all of the fields, except for this one, first telemetry, where I just convert uh, the value from a timestamp to a string in the particular format that I need to give it to uh, Marketo later. Then uh, I upsert the lead, so if it's if it doesn't exist, I create it. Otherwise, I update it. And again, I go into this in detail in the uh, create or upsert leads video. And again, the same kind of error handling. And uh, Marketo is going to give me uh, some data back in upsert response. Now, I want to, if that was successful, uh, I want to set a timestamp on the record and I want to capture that Marketo ID into its own field. So I'm just really pulling it up out of that absurd response. So it's really clear in the record there is Marketo ID. And then I add the lead to a campaign. And this is very similar to the absurd operation. It's just we act on a different endpoint here. Uh, we're giving it that Marketo ID that I just uh, lifted into the Marketo ID field. And I'm capturing the responses. I capture all these responses in different fields. So uh, it's really useful for debugging. I have them all available. Again, the same check, the, whether the access token is expired. So finally, at this point in the pipeline, I know that uh, I got a lead. Um, I merged the data. Uh, I updated it or created it in Marketo. 
and I added it to the campaign. So this is where I write a record to that second table, that telemetry Marketo table. So really it's very, very simple. Again, I refer back to the same JDBC URI. I'm uh, writing to the uh, telemetry Marketo table and it only has uh, email Marketo ID and created date. So I don't need to define any mapping because I've carefully set up those fields in the record with those names, StreamSets automatically maps those. So um, I'm going to try this out. Now Marketo has a record for me, but uh, it doesn't have first or last names. And my database does. And so what I can do here is just remove this uh, flag record in this table. So I'm removing my uh, record from telemetry Marketo. So what that means is that this uh, JDBC, this uh, SQL call will not now find me and I can preview the pipeline. So if I preview there, I get back that one single record. Just got to wait a second. Ah, here we go. And uh, so I've got found myself. So this is coming from that uh, registration uh, table. And look, it's got my first name and last name, okay? So they uh, weren't in Marketo, but I've got them now. So I look look up the lead and you'll notice here that lookup response has my Marketo lead ID and uh, that first name and last name are null. So uh, just pass through the error handling. Uh, I set any not provided fields to null, but uh, they're all set. And uh, here I'm setting up um, my role as data leader and uh, that first telemetry field. So now I can uh, upsert the lead. And then again, the response is here. So I can see that that lead ID was updated and it's successful. And then uh, I set the, that bit of metadata there and I add myself to the campaign. And again, I can see that this was successful and uh, check for any more errors. And then I write successfully to my SQL. So if I now go to Marketo and do a refresh there, because I had a uh, right to destinations enabled, uh, I can see that I have indeed updated Marketo and my data is nicely enriched with the first name and last name.